Hey guys, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and today I'm going to do two reviews. First one's going to be the Magnapan SMGA, which is a planar magnetic speaker. And also, but it's a vintage speaker. It was made in 1986. This exact pair was made in 1986. And I'm also going to review the Ortofon SPU number no. one moving coil cartridge. Now, well, this is kind of, this is a brand new cartridge I'm reviewing, but the model, the SPU, dates back to 1958. Yeah, it's been around, it's stuck around for a good reason because it sounds really, really good. But with the SMG, yeah, this particular pair of speakers, this came to me from a man named Seth. He basically just gave them to me, no strings attached, no asking for anything from me, which is incredible. So thank you, Seth. And when I took them, I wasn't exactly sure what I was getting into. Now I've lived with a lot of Magnapan speakers starting with the 1.6 QR, which stood for quasi ribbon, 1.7s, MMGs, 3.6, 3.7, lots of Maggies have passed through this room, but none as old as this. I'm not, I wasn't at all familiar with the sound of, let's say pre ribbon tweeter Magnapans. And this one, the SMGA is certainly in that category. So it's a fully planar magnetic design. So I set it up and I started listening to it and I'm thinking, yeah, it sounds like a Magnapan because it's basically presenting a wall of sound. But it's more, it's, it's more laid back. It's not as hyper detailed as Magnapans can be. It's certainly not as transparent. Maybe it's a better way of putting it. But it had that certain something, that, that kind of sound not coming from a box. That's what it has. <laughs> That's what Magnapans do. This sound does not sound like it's coming from a box. Now, is a Magnapan an open baffle speaker since it's not a box speaker? I guess, but it is a dipole speaker. And you could, that's what it has in common with open baffles. There's just as much sound coming out of the back of the SMGA as coming out of the front. So the way it fills a room with sound is different. After all, box speakers project sound forward and Magnapans and many open baffle speakers present sound forward and back. They don't sound like boxes, nothing like a box. So if you've never heard an open baffle speaker or a planar magnetic speaker like a Maggie, you just, you just can't really imagine what this is like. I'm so frustrated because I can only use words to describe it. Don't get nervous guys, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in this episode. In case you don't already know who or what Magnapan is, they're an American company. They're based in Minnesota, in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. They started in the early 70s. I don't remember the exact date, but the technology was pretty much locked in place right from the beginning, and that's what they do. They don't take shortcuts. They're, most of their speakers are very affordable. The, the, the modern equivalent, the current equivalent to the SMGA is, is the LRS, which I've raved about. It was my speaker of the year a couple of years ago. It's an amazing speaker. It is now about $700 a pair. The SMGA doesn't sound that much like an LRS, except to say that they're both very open. But the SMGA is nowhere as resolving, nowhere as transparent as the LRS not even close. But what it has instead, it has this mellow quality. It is not high res. It is very rich sounding in the upper bass, mid-range area, voices, acoustic instruments sound so voluptuous and rich and just beautiful. Really, it's just a beautiful sounding speaker. Let's talk a wee bit about setup. Magnapans, all Magnapans need to be at least three feet away from the wall to sound their best. Four feet might be better, maybe even five. But anyway, you gotta really think that three feet is what you need. Uh, next, they need an amplifier that puts out current, meaning an amplifier that's happy driving four ohm loads, which rules out most low power tube amplifiers right off the bat. So don't ask me about that because it ain't gonna happen and power hungry speakers. They need some juice, not 
hundreds and hundreds of watts, but well, I did use them with this little Emotiva integrated amp I have in for review, the TA1. And I also used it with um, my Pass Labs XA25, which is 50 watts channel in 24 ohms. So it's not, you don't need gobs of power, but you definitely need good power, strong power to make it, to make it do what it does so well. It is a planner magnetic design. There's no ribbon tweeter in this model. Uh, so it doesn't have sparkling uh, a treble or anything. The treble is fairly laid back, but I wouldn't call it soft. I'd call it very easy to listen to. So SMGs are old speakers and I'm looking around on the internet to find others that are out there. And you know what? I really couldn't find more than one or two. Now the model that came after the SMG was the MMG and that went up until a couple of years ago. So there's thousands and thousands of them out there. And then the current model is the current entry level MagnaPan speaker is the LRS. But looking around on the used market on eBay and Craigslist, I didn't actually see that many MagnaPans to tell you the truth because the people that have them just like them. And yes, by the way, uh, this is really important. When you buy a 35-year-old speaker or a 35-year-old car, you can't expect it to necessarily run perfectly, right? Okay, so there are stories on the internet about old MagnaPans um, basically delaminating. You could say the wires on the planar magnetic diaphragm start to come off or, or buzz or rattle. That's true. Now, this specific pair that I have here, the SMGAs that I have, actually did go back to MagnaPan a few years ago to be refurbished. So the grills look really nice. I can't say what the drivers look like because they're behind the grills and the grills aren't easily removable. So this speaker has had some uh, tender loving care. Um, but in terms of buying old speakers, they may have issues. So I can't guarantee you that if you go out and buy a 30 or 40 year old MagnaPan that it's going to be perfect. I, I don't know that. Now, what I would suggest, if you buy an old speaker, a MagnaPan or any other, unless you're buying it from a reputable dealer who knows his or her stuff, you should really listen to it before you plunk down your money or be assured that the seller knows what the hell they're talking about, that the speakers are operating and performing correctly without buzzing or breaking up or anything like that. Now, this speaker... Uh, like all older MagnaPans, is not the most dynamic design. It's not going to, you know, kick you in the gut or anything. It's not that kind of sound. If you want to rock out, it plays loud pretty well, by the way. But it, it, I wouldn't suggest if you're a, if you're a rocker, <laughs> working into heavy metal or something, or rap or something. It's probably not the best. I, it, I, it doesn't get a, a big strong recommend from me. But in terms of beauty of, of a speaker that makes things sound nice, sound, sound engaging and, and just sweet, yeah, this speaker can do it. I am, <laughs> once again, falling in love with MagnaPan, but I don't know. Um, I, I'm still processing what this speaker has that makes it so magical. But it has a thing, and I guess that's one of the reasons why they're so hard to find used ones, because the people that have them really love them. And that says a lot, right, about MagnaPans in general. You know, there's a perception out there that MagnaPans don't make bass, that they're thin-sounding speakers, and I've never felt that. Even the little LRS, which is actually a little bit smaller than the SMG, it made bass, but it wasn't kick-ass bass. It wasn't punchy bass. It wasn't dynamic bass. And to get Maggie's to sound good, you do have to play them a bit louder. They're not great late-night listening speakers, including this one, the SMGA. But in terms of what they do, they, they do make bass. Now, of course, you want one really deep bass. Yeah, you're going to need a subwoofer. But adding a subwoofer to a MagnaPan, this one or any other one's not going to make it, in my opinion at least, a great rock and roll speaker. It's just, it's just not what this one's going to do. Now the new, the bigger ones like the 3.6s and 3.7s, yeah, those can rock out a bit better. You just crank those puppies up and they can really, really, really fill a room. The SMGA projects, and that is the right word, it projects a wall of sound. But, there's a couple of buts. A, if you're taller than the speaker, meaning if you're taller than 48 inches high, 
it will sound significantly duller and not as good when you stand up. It's a, it's a sit down speaker, absolutely. The image, by the way, is big and wide, very wide with, with really good recordings, but it lacks specificity and the center image focus is not the best. It's kind of blurry in that sense. So in, in these ways, it sounds like an old speaker, a lovely old speaker, but an old speaker. So, you know, this Nick Cave record from a couple of years ago, it's just him alone with a piano. And man, oh man, Nick's voice was so complete, so natural sounding, truly remarkable. Yeah, Nick's, Nick was all there. That's what it was. Nick was all there in ways that contemporary speakers, most of them can't quite equal. They sound thinner and more two-dimensional, flatter than what comes out of the SMGA. That was a spine tingling experience. Listen to that record. So as for the Ortofon SPU, now, as I said earlier, this model debuted in 1958. It has been in continuous production since then. It was originally designed for pro use for radio stations. It was a very exacting cartridge. It's a moving coil design. And it is sold, well, in, this, in a head shell, in, in, to, integrated into the head shell itself. Now, there are currently eight other SPU models that are sold, configured in this, in this head shell arrangement that can be used with Techniques turntables and S, some SME tone arms and other tone arms. Now, there's also SPU models that are sold that are regular cartridges that you can use in any tone arm. I have no experience with those. I can't say how they differ from the one I have here. The SPU number one comes in two configurations, one with an elliptical stylus, that's the one I have here, and also the SPU number one also is available with a spherical stylus, and they do sound different. The, the spherical one, which I didn't hear, is said to be more forgiving, more classic sounding, a little bit more rolled off on the top end, but a lot of people love it, which is why they make these two versions, one with a spherical stylus and one with an elliptical. Uh, now, it is a low output moving coil cartridge. It's not really much of an issue. You can use it with any phono preamp that has enough gain, has a moving coil input. I did use it with the MoFi uh, phono preamp designed by the legendary Tim DeParavicini. It's a $400 phono preamp. It sounded fine. But I really, really, really wanted to hear what I could extract, the, the best I could get out of the SPU. So I used it with my Parasound JC3 Plus. It's designed by another legend, John Curl. That's what the JC stands for. It sounded a lot better. I mean, a lot better. But that preamp is many, many times more expensive than the MoFi preamp. But anyway, I, I just, I fell in love with the sound of this cartridge. It is so bold, so 3D. It's like a reach out and touch kind of sound. Um, I was listening to this Frank Sinatra record, the one he did with Duke Ellington. They, they were pals, I think. And um, what a gorgeous recording, just stunning. I, while I did spend most of my time just relishing the sound of the SPU, taking it on its own merits, I, I couldn't resist comparing it to some other cartridges, starting with this one, the Zoo Denon DL-103, which is a Zoo tweak version of the classic Denon 103 cartridge, which in itself is pretty freaking old. It dates back to 1962. And it was also designed for pro use in it. It's an original form. And the thing was, the Denon 103, the Zoo Denon 103, guess what? It actually sounded like a more modern cartridge. It's also a moving coil, by the way. It sounded like a more contemporary design. It sounded flatter, more accurate, but less 3D, less va va voom rich. It was just a more neutral sounding cartridge. And I like cartridges and preamps and speakers that have some personality to it. So if that's you and you want more juice, then you'd be more of an Ortofon person, an SPU person. And if you want more neutral, accurate, flatter, blah, 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 maybe you'd prefer the Denon, the Zoo Denon, or just the Denon 
DL103. That you know depends on how depends on how you how you go, right? As, as always, in my opinion at least, it's not so much finding the better one; it's finding the one that lines up a little more squarely with your taste and what you're looking for in your sound. I own uh, an Ortofon, an Ortofon Cadenza Blue, mo another moving coil cartridge. And comparing the SPU to the Cadenza Blue, well, it sounded more like like the SPU than the than the Denon did. That's for sure. It had it had warmth. It had body. It was a great sounding cartridge. It was. I think it might even have a better tonal balance and mid range than the SPU. But the SPU's that that three D solidity to the sound. The, even the Cadenza Blue couldn't quite get there. It wasn't. It wasn't the same thing. It really wasn't. I'm thinking. I want both. I want both in one cartridge. Now I don't know that that's ever going to happen, but I'm just saying I like them a lot for different reasons. So yeah, I was uh, going through some changes there. Now to finish, the, the third cartridge comparison was this one, the Grado Platinum 3. Now this is not a moving coil cartridge. It's, it's a moving iron cartridge, which is pretty much very similar to a moving magnet. And that one had some of that SPU pizzazz to it. It did light up. It was more dynamic. It was, in some ways, the most dynamic of all these cartridges. It just has a rock and roll sort of personality to it. It's more kick ass, you know. The Grado sound is so much fun. And this cartridge, by the way, the Grado is a mere $400. And it is made here in Brooklyn. By the way, the Ortofans are made in Denmark. I forgot to mention that earlier. And the Denon cartridge is made in Japan. The, the basic Denon version is made in Japan, and then it's tweaked up in here in the U.S. in Utah at the Zoo Factory. So, you know, it's funny. I'm listening to this Talking Heads, this live Talking Heads record. The name of the band is Talking Heads, which I think is way better than their Stop Making Sense album, to tell you the truth. And uh, what a killer band. Now, David Byrne wrote a book called How Music Works. And in it, he talked about this idea that some bands are better live and some bands are better in the studio. And I don't, know, I don't remember what he said about ta his own band, Talking Heads, but I would say that the Talking Heads were a much better live band than studio band. I saw them many, many times here in New York City and always a blast. A lot of their later records kind of leave me cold. But this record, which is basically their early stuff up through the early 80s, um, just was... The, this, the grooves are so deep and so powerful, and the Platinum 3 just knocked it out of the park. And I went to, back to the SPU, number one, and it wasn't quite as, well, alive and, and rocking, but it had that solidity to it that I really, really loved. You know, this is, this is a new thing for me, changing cartridges within two minutes, basically pop out one, pop in a new one, rebalance the counterweight, turn it on and listen again. That is a new thing for me and I am enjoying it so much. I would definitely say I would never want to live with the sound of just one cartridge, probably ever again. You know, I think I'm really transformed by this idea of living with the Technique's SL1200GR, which I should have mentioned earlier, all the listening was done on the Technique's table. And the idea of changing cartridges at whim, within a minute, I can change the cartridge and get an entirely new sound. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely do. Really, really do. So now we're going to do, so Steve, what do you really think? I think if you've only lived with box speakers, you've got to listen to a Magnapan speaker or an open baffle speaker or an electrostatic speaker. Hearing sound coming out of a box can sound great. I mean, that's mostly what audiophiles listen to. But when you listen to sound that isn't coming out of a box, it's coming out of a panel, where as much sound is coming out of the back of it, it's coming out of the front, the way it puts sound in a room is so different. You've missed out on something really, really important. If you're lucky enough to find a used Magnapan, whether it's a SMG, an MMG, an LRS, or one of the bigger ones, I did see 
uh, a MagnaPan MG2 for $495 on uh, eBay. So they are out there. If you're lucky enough to find one, grab it. As long as you can do that thing of pulling them a good three feet out from the wall and you have an amp that's happy driving four ohm loads and can put out some real juice. Those are the two requirements. But other than that, I think you got you to try it. You really, really need to see what that's all about. I can't stress that enough. And for the Ortofon SPU number one, well, doesn't sound like a modern cartridge. And that's a good thing, <laughs> not so good thing. If you want flat, neutral, accurate, buy a modern cartridge, absolutely. But if you want a fun ride, if you want to just revel in the sound, especially of jazz, this, this it's it's amazing. It's you know it's it's incredible to think that something this good, this SPU, could have been the basic design occurred that long ago, 1958, that they could figure out that much. And this is the early days of stereo. I should have mentioned that earlier. Really early stereo phono cartridge, and here we are in 2022, and it still sounds freaking amazing so yeah especially if you have a turntable with a detachable head shell and you can pop it in and pop it out you should listen to one of these spus and with that i can say yes it is that special time for the audiophiliac viewer system of the day roland sent this in he has what he calls a modest system his speakers are paradigm prestige b15s and he's running those with two SVS SB2000 subwoofers. Now there's a Denon AVR2805 receiver, but he's using it as a preamp. The power amp is an Emotiva XPA2 Gen2. The source is a Marantz CD63SE, and he's using that along with Chromecast Audio. The entire system was bought second hand for a total of $4,000 Canadian. Nice. So we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. I, I get, you know, I put so much into these videos, but I get so much back. When I hear from you guys, it's so, it, it lifts me up. I really feel like I'm connecting with people, and that's fantastic. All over the world, Finland, Denmark, Puerto Rico, Australia, the United States, Canada, England, Germany, Japan. Wow, amazing, amazing. So yeah, if you have yet to subscribe, please do. And the other thing I'd like you to check out is my Patreon, which can be found at P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash audiophiliac and patreon now accepts payment in dollars pounds and euros and with that i can say my work here is at last complete thank you again for watching and i really do hope to see you back here again very very soon bye bye